Hallelujah, Jesus, glory, God. Oh, he is so good. We just love to always begin our broadcast, broadcast just exhorting his name because we know that he is the king of kings, that he is the all-powerful, the all-amazing God. He is almighty. Hallelujah. He is the righteous God. He is ever the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. He is that peace that surpasses all understanding. He is our God, and he stands for righteousness, glory be to God. And because you see, our God is righteous, hallelujah. We should all seek him first with our whole heart. Everything we do, we should seek him because Matthew 6.33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, glory to God. We are to follow after righteousness. We are to follow after godliness and walk by faith and not by sight, loving everybody unconditionally as our Father has taught us to, and just wait on God. Because, you see, we serve a patient God. He is so meek. And he is so humble at heart, glory to God. And then Psalm thirty four fifteen says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The Lord is so gracious to us. He is, his mercy is renewed every single morning. Glory to God. We just love just lifting up his name, just glorifying him, just worshiping him because he is worthy to be worshipped. And we worship our Lord with extravagance. Glory to God. We worship him because of who he is. It's absolutely nothing that we have done. Glory to God. But his grace and his mercy is way beyond our comprehension. He looks beyond all of our faults, and he sees our needs. He is a forgiving God. He sees us through his spiritual eyes, glory to God. He's in control of this entire universe. He knows the beginning, and our God knows the ending. He is the first, and he is the last. He is Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He alone is mighty. He is a great God who supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Midday Glory. I am Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon, the host of Midday Glory. I am so honored to be the host, glory to God, and I give all glory. I give all honor to God. Hallelujah. I do not take this assignment lightly at all. This is indeed an honor from the Lord, glory to God, and we thank God for his amazing grace and his tender mercies, hallelujah. And we want to always take the time to send a shout out and say thank you to every last one of our listeners right here in the United States and those who are in the foreign countries. We say thank you for supporting and listening to Midday Glory, Glory to God. We pray that this ministry is a blessing to every last one of you. It is our intent every Wednesday to give a powerful word of God and prayer that will bless your heart. Glory to God, glory to God. And before we begin this broadcast, I want to send a shout out to the founder of When Christians Speak Talk Radio, Reverend Ray Ross, for standing in for me on last Wednesday. Glory to God. So we ended now, Wednesday before last, now we were talking about God uses plain old ordinary people. Now, we're still on the subject of God's grace and mercy. And we were, we were talking about uh, getting into a conversation about God uses plain old ordinary people. And he knows that we all are sinners saved by his grace. And, and he, he knows we were shaped in iniquity. And David said this in Psalms 51, 5. He says, Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So David confesses that he was born a sinner. Yes, from the very moment his mother conceived him. So David sighed in the book of Psalms 51 and verse 1, asking God, asking God to have mercy upon in him, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of God's tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And David didn't stop there. In verse 2, David asked the Lord to wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from his sin, to cleanse him from all of his sin. Glory to God. But David continued on in verse 3, and I believe this verse is so very, very important because David says, for I acknowledge my transgression. That word acknowledge, I underline it in my Bible because David is not trying to blame, to, to, to uh, do the blame game. 
He's not trying to blame anybody else for what he did. He says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Glory to God. And then verse 4, it says, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thy judges. Glory to God. David is saying to the Lord, you dear Lord, so it all. You know everything that I have done because nothing is hidden from you, O God. David says to God that his sentence against him is just. Glory to God. You see, God already knows our path. He already knows our future, but and our God knows our ending. So we just need to let go and to totally let God glory to God. So this we wanted to dig into, uh, dig in and point out some people in the Bible that and and reveal how God used them mightily in spite of their past of their other or, or their sin. Glory to God. God uses plain old ordinary people. And I believe week before last we broke down these plain old ordinary people. It could be drug addicts. It could be drunkards, alcoholics. It could be robbers, it could be fornicators, it could be adulterers, people off the street and doing all kinds of things, homeless people, poor people, uneducated people, suicidal people, people who have been abused, glory to God, and have abused others. And then he uses all colors, all shapes, all sizes, all ages. He, he uses those who are afraid, even those who are openly persecuted believers in Christ. God uses sinners like us, glory to God. All we have to do according to the word of God, is to repent, confess our sins, and he will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We serve a mighty good God. We are so blessed that he sacrificed his life for us. Glory to God. So beginning today, I want to share Bible characters God uses in spite of their past. It's in the Bible. Our God used sinners like us, glory to God. So let's begin by just asking a question. Uh, before we gave our lives completely to the Lord, surrendering completely to him, did we ever feel like our past disqualified us for having a, a part of God's plan for our lives? And then the second question, did Satan ever whisper in our ear or they're still trying to whisper in our ear, telling us God couldn't possibly use us because of what we've done in the past. I can truly say for myself, Satan has whispered in my ear, and he still, still thinks that he can still whisper in my ear, telling me that God can't possibly use me. You see, Satan knows once we get a touch of Christ's glory to God that there is no turning back, that he has lost us for good. So he, he, his desire is that we stay in the sin that we are walking in. He tries to convince us. This is where we belong, that we are unworthy to serve God. But why? Why does Satan tell us these things? Well, because it's his job to make us feel inadequate because of what we have done in the past. Satan speaks loud and he speaks bold. He tries his best to outspeak God. He even tries his best to overspeak God. He whispers in our ear that God can't use us. But praise God for his power, glory to God. We serve a powerful, mighty God. And it's often, and I often say it, that everything we need is in the word of God. So when we feel that we are not adequate to do the Lord's work, all we have to do is open our Bibles or in this day and time, we open our tablets or our iPads or cell phones or whatever device we use to, to, to read the word of God. And in the word of God, there are so many people that God used mightily. Believe me when I say that Satan would try his best to stop anything we try to do for the Lord. He will, he will place in us the, the spirit of fear. And we know, glory to God, that God has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but God has given us a spirit of, uh, but he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us love, power, and a sound mind. And so when we feel inadequate, we say, that our speech is not good enough. We, we don't know how to articulate our words. Well, well, well guess what? In the Bible, it talks about Moses having a speech defeat, defect, but he was the great lawgiver. He was the chief of the prophets. In Exodus 4.10, Moses said, Moses pleaded with the Lord. He said, oh, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been. I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tired and my words get tangled. And Moses was saying to God, I am not a man of words, but I am of slow speech and of slow tongue. And later he pleaded that he is, he is of an uncircumcised lip. And Moses felt that his speech inabilities should disqualify him for being used in the way God wanted to use him. The Lord's response is one of the strongest biblical supports of his absolute sovereignty. 
In verse 11, the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth or who makes him mute or deaf or sin or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? God did not see Moses stuttering or his speech impairment as a hindrance to his plan. When we hear the negative voices in our ear, just know that it is never God, never is it God. Nothing negative comes from the Lord, glory to God. Our Lord does not throw things in our face. He sees us spiritually to, to deliver us. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our sustainer. He is our high power, glory to God. So we, we, when we begin to feel uh, guilt over old sins, no, it's not from, that. Know that it's from Satan, and it's not from God. The feeling that we may sometimes have that we are not good enough to do His will anymore, it is not from God. The sense that we would never measure up because our lives didn't turn out like we expected it to, it is not from God. If we have any of these feelings, any of these negative feelings, know that those feelings are not from our heavenly Father. Glory to God. And we're gonna go back to um. John chapter 4, we, I believe we, we mentioned this week before less about the Samaritan woman, but I want to take the time this time to go through this chapter, glory to God. The woman had five husbands, and I'm sure that everyone listening knows the story, but she had five husbands, and the woman, man that she was living was not her husband. Do you know that God used her mindfully? God does not care about what our past contains. He only cares about our future. So let's take a walk through the Word of God and, and see the people in the Bible that has shady passes that they, if you will, but God used them mightily, glory to God. So we're going to begin today with a Samaritan woman. Then we're going to come next week with the whole host as we close out this um, subject on God's mercy and grace next week. But today I want to just uh, 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 focus on this Samaritan woman. Her past and her present filled her with shame. She couldn't go to the well with the other Samaritan um, uh, women in the morning and evening to draw uh, uh, water from the well. She had to go by herself in the middle of the day because of her past and the current choices that she had made. Yet God gave her the privilege, glory to God, of being the one to tell the story about Jesus, to bring the, the, the good news about our Savior because of her willingness to, to go to tell them many of the people, the Samaritans, were saved, glory to God. So beginning at verse 7 in chapter 4 of John, it tells a story about the Samaritan woman. She was a, a woman from Samaria who came to draw water from the well. Now, check this out. She couldn't go with the other women in the morning or afternoon, but at noontime, she went by herself. And Jesus was at the world, glory to God. And Jesus said to her, give me drink. You see, the disciples had, had left and had gone out into the city to buy food, so Jesus was all by himself. So the Samaritan woman um, looked at Jesus and said, how is it that you, being a Jew, would ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Because the Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. And Jesus responded to her and said, if you knew about God's gift of eternal life and who it is who says, give me a drink, you would have asked in Dead, and he would have given you living water, eternal water, glory to God, having eternal life. So that the Samaritan woman said to Jesus, you have nothing to draw with, no bucket, no rope, and the well is very deep. Where then do you get that living water? The, the Samaritan woman also said to Jesus, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and who used to drink from it and his sons and his cattle also? Jesus responded once again to the woman, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but who Whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water, satisfying his thirst for God, welding up, continually flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life, glory to God. So the American woman looked at Jesus and said, sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty, nor have to continually come in back to this world to draw water, glory to God. And after the Samaritan woman said this to Jesus, Jesus responded to her and said to her, he looked at her and said, go, go, call your husband and, 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 tell, them to, and tell them to come back. So now I want to note here, nothing happens that Jesus don't already know. So the statement was made to provide insight to let this woman know who was speaking to her. So when Jesus asked her to go and, and get her husband, the woman responded and said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus responded and said to her, you have correctly said, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you are now living with is not your husband. You have said this truthfully. 
So the woman quickly identified Jesus as a prophet. So she told Jesus that her father's worship on the mountain, but the Jews said that that's not the place where you should worship. You should worship in Jerusalem at the temple. So Jesus replied to her, and he said, woman, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father, neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. And Jesus said, you Samaritans do not know what you worship. But we Jews do know what we worship, but salvation is from the Jews. But it's a time that is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, meaning they will be worshiping from the heart, the inner self, and in truth. But the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. God is spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind, and those who worship him must worship him. So the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming. It's he who is called Christ, the anointed one. And when that one comes, he will tell us everything that we need to know. And Jesus just simply looked at her and spoke to her and said, I am he, I am the Messiah. And it was around about that time in the conversation that the, that the disciples returned back, but they didn't ask Jesus any questions about the woman. They didn't even ask him, what are you doing talking to her? Or why are you talking to her? So at that time, the, the woman just departed and she left with her water jar and went into the city telling the people, come see a man who told us all the things that I have done. She was questioning, can this be the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one? So many of the Samaritans that left the city and they went out to where Jesus was because they wanted to see Jesus for themselves. And after they saw Jesus, many of them uh, of uh, from the city believed in him and they trusted him as their savior because of what the woman said when she testified about Jesus. He, he said, to, he told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to remain there for a few more days. So many more believed in him with a deep abiding trust because of his word, his personal message to them. And then they told the Samaritan woman that we don't just believe because you told us. We believe now because we have heard him for ourselves and know with confidence, confident assurance that this one is truly the savior of all the world. Glory to God. Glory to God. This Samaritan woman who was a sinner living in adultery was used mightily by God, winning souls for the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God uses ordinary people. Our past do not define our future. Why? Because God said so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we come before you right now, Lord God. We come worshiping and praising your holy name, O God. You are our God, and beside you there is none other, Lord God. You are the mighty Christ, hallelujah. You are the son of the living God, hallelujah. We worship your holy and your righteous name, Lord God. You are the truth, almighty God, and you are the light. You know one God, Father God, come to the Father, but by you, you are almighty. You are all powerful, hallelujah. We thank you that we know that you are in control of this entire world. You know the beginning, and you know the ending, Lord God. You know all of our past. You know all of our present, God, and you know our future, Lord God. All of our trust, almighty God, is in you because you are our Savior, Lord God. You are our Redeemer. You are our righteous God. You are our sustainer, Lord God. You are our deliverer, Lord God. You are our healer. Hallelujah. You, almighty God, is our life. God, we cannot live without you, almighty God. Because of you, Lord God, we know whose we are, Lord God. We have overcome this world by your power. Hallelujah. We've overcome by your authority. Hallelujah. We know that we are free in you, almighty God. We know that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus glory to God. Hallelujah. We are children of the most high God. All things work for the good of those who are in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. We have been called according to your person, God. Called to do your will. Hallelujah. While we are on this earth, we have been redeemed through your blood. Thank you, Lord God. We know that we have been forgiven from all of our sins, Lord God. We have the riches of God's grace upon us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, Father God, we thank you that you chose us, God. We did not choose ourselves. Lord God, we know now that you are appointed and you anointed us for your good work. Glory be to God. We are to witness of the dying world, God, winning souls to you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. We know that we have been crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Our sins have been forgiven and they will not come back in our face anymore. We are free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, Almighty God, created us in your own image. You are the one, O oh God, that formed us in our mother's womb. You are the one, O oh God, that set us apart. Glory be to God. 
We know that we are a chosen generation, that we are a royal priesthood, God. We know, almighty God, that you are our special possession, glory to God. We declare your glory. We declare your praise, God. You called us out of darkness, almighty God, into your marvelous light, glory to God. We are so grateful for your love and for your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for you, Father God, for your continuous blessings over our lives and the lives of our families, Lord God. We thank you for your continuous healing, Lord God, your continuous deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. You are the almighty healer. So we thank you first and foremost for healing the land, Lord God. You said if my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray and seek your faith, oh God, and turn from our wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven and you will forgive our sins and that you will heal the land. We thank you, oh Lord God, for healing the land, God, even though it may not look like it, God, we thank you for healing the land, Lord God. And then we thank you, Lord God, for healing our physical bodies in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you that every known disease, unknown and unknown, God, was nailed to the cross over 2,000 years ago, Lord God. We thank you, Almighty God, for your mighty power. We've learned, oh God, to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord God. We've learned, Almighty God, to cast all of our cares upon you, Lord God. We've learned, Almighty God, that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. You are truly in control, Lord God, and we've learned to just rest in you, Lord God. Lord God, we continue to pray for the situation in Ukraine, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. We even pray for Russia, Lord God, because your word said to pray for our enemies. We pray for Putin's heart, Lord God, that it will be changed, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. We pray for the families of those who have died in this in this war, Lord God. We pray, oh God, for the innocent children, the innocent babies, oh God. We pray, Father God, for the parents, oh God, who have had to lay their babies to rest, Lord God. You know, Father God, and you, you know all things, Lord God. And in spite of all that, God, you are still an awesome God. You are still the all-powerful God. We will not look on the circumstances of this world, God, but our focus, almighty God, will remain in you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are our God. You are our defense to the all-powerful. Our almighty God belongs to you. Oh, we bless you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God, and we praise your holy and your righteous name. And this is our prayer, and we pray this prayer in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Please stay tuned for next week, our last uh, Monday, I mean, our last Wednesday of this month as we conclude our subject, grace and God's grace and mercy. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.